Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. And let's talk horror. Today we're going to do our review on Beetlejuice 2. So we are going to have some spoilers in here. We're going to do our positives and our negatives first. That'll be spoiler free. And then we'll get into the spoilers of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So let's get into the positives. So some of the positives, the opening is very nostalgic. It had me like, let's go, like, yeah. you know, kind of like dancing in my seat. And it just felt very, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it felt very much like the original. It did. Um, the practical and visual effects worked well together for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple parts that were a little goofy, but overall it looked really, really good. Yeah, there was some real genuine funny moments that like I, I laughed out loud. I was being loud. attacked by a moose. Yes, um, it, it was hilarious in, in good ways. So, mm -hmm. I will say that Beetlejuice singing Richard Marx's I Will Be Right Here Waiting For You mm -hmm. made me laugh so hard. I think I embarrassed people that weren't even with me. <laughs> Secondhand embarrassment. I would. That like, was one of the funniest funny, things I've seen in cinema this year. Easily, it was like, hilarious. I had sure. to cover my face. I was laughing so hard at that moment. Um, there's a lot of fun Easter eggs and callbacks, callbacks to the original, um, like the sandworm, mm -hmm. um, which I liked. Uh, the handbook for the recently deceased makes an appearance again in this one. Mm -hmm. Wish we could have had more of that, but it's still in there. Uh, and then you have singing and dancing at the wedding, and it's a total throwback to the dinner scene mm -hmm. from the original. Oh, yeah. Um, when you have Astrid and Delia doing their thing, like that's a total throwback to the, uh, I almost said Ade Dewey Dembala, <laughs> but to the Deo from the original. Yeah. yeah. So those are some of our positives being as spoiler free as we can. Now let's get into some of our negatives of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So some of the negatives, um, I didn't care that we were still using Jeffrey Jones's likeness. Like he's not dead; he's just a bad guy. Yeah. And I feel we're not like, going to get into that no, here. We're not going to get into what he did or why we don't like him. But he's a bad man, and I feel like we should have just killed him off and just left him dead. He's dead. That's it. Let's move on to the story because he doesn't deserve any any part of this movie. No. I get that. Um, he was a big Charles part. Dietz was a big part of the first movie. And he was. There's no reason to memorialize Jeffrey Jones in this movie. Nope. You know, he died. That's it. It's a wrap. We're done. That's all you need to know. Absolutely. Um, a lot of the cameos in this movie were there for the sake of being cameos. I, they really um, did this. I, you know, it was at like, fan hey, look, service for sure. Look, here's Danny DeVito. Oh, well, there was Danny DeVito. Yeah. You know, like, it's stuff like that where it's just like, come on. Like, you didn't even really need to do a lot. Even though Danny lot. DeVito looked really cool. He did look great. Yeah. His his character in the underworld, or I'm sorry, in the neither world. In the neither, yeah. Looks so much better than a lot of the other ones mm -hmm. did. So there's a lot of subplots. There's a lot going on. Um, and one in particular that we might get into for the spoilers, it was um, it was kind of unnecessary. No, it was extremely unnecessary. So it's like there was a lot going on. And like Ashley said, the, the good thing about it, yes, there's a lot of subplots and some of them are unnecessary and some of them go nowhere. But none of them felt like it bogged the movie down. No. Like you, there was never a point where the movie felt like it was dragging. So there is a positive light to that as well. But the thing that bothered me probably the most from the entire movie was it was very dependent on scenes and sequences from the original that could have been original moments instead. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, some of the Easter eggs, like when you go to the um, art museum, you see some of Delia's art from the first film. Yeah, that's, you know, I thought that was cool. cool. And they don't pay attention. You know, they don't focus on it. No, you just see it. You, 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 you know tell. what it is. You know what it is for sure. But there's a lot of uh, things they do in this movie that are directly parts of the first one. It's like one. we get it, but I mean, make it something different right. at the same time. You could have done more original things in this movie and not yeah. relied so heavily on what made the first one a success. Right. I'm not coming here to watch Beetlejuice. You're not going to top Beetlejuice. I want Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and I want it to leave its own impact for its own things, not things it did exactly yeah. like the first one. So in 30 years, when my daughter is talking about this, it's her nostalgia, right. you know? Instead right. of it being the same exact thing. Sure. So those are some of our negatives of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Now let's get into the spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, run. Yes. Drive. Go by plane. I don't care what you got to do. Get there. Go watch Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and then come back and watch our spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So now we're spoiling things, guys. Um, Lydia and Astrid, they have a strained relationship. She is like in a boarding school. Um, she Astrid for, doesn't like, believe art. in ghosts. Yeah, and um, you know, Lydia, she has trauma from her childhood, and she does a TV show. Yeah, she does a TV show. This I feel like she was kind of like pushed into doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Lydia or um, Astrid doesn't believe in anything that her mother does, and thinks that she's this big like joke. So we were talking earlier about a subplot that didn't need to be there. A soul sucker who is Dolores, uh, Beetlejuice's ex-wife, is after Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. Monica Bellucci's great. She is. And her, her look looked awesome. I she looked loved. fantastic. She staples herself back together. It looks um, really cool. I know that she's dating Tim Burton, so this may have been a Rob Zombie thing. Which, again, no hate. Yeah. It, anything I If I remade Jaws, she'd be the shark. So, I mean, like... It, I get it, but you could have done. You could have made her subplot a little more useful to the overall arch of the story. None of it was needed. Mm -hmm. It all could have been explained with different ways. So that was one that I was just kind of like, eh, we really didn't need much of that. We do get to see a live Beetlejuice, which is really awesome. I love that we get kind of like a background on where he mm -hmm. came from. I love that. He was a grave robber taking gold teeth out of people's mouth and putting mm -hmm. them in his during the plague. What? Um, but then you find out that Beetlejuice and Dolores, they ended up getting married, and then they killed each other. Dolores poisoned Beetlejuice, and he killed her with an axe. While right he was <laughs> yeah, As he was yeah. dying. So that's why she's back, because she was in a soul-sucking cult. And in order to get eternal life, she had to get Beetlejuice's soul when he was a person. So we find out that Adam and Barbara, they, they found a loophole, and that's how they moved on. Stop it. Like, we couldn't have come Hated up with something it. more creative than that. Like, I, I did not like that part at all. To me, the one of the best parts of the original Beetlejuice is their love yeah, absolutely. for each other. It felt real. Um, and the genuine. only reference we get to them is, oh, they found a loophole, so they moved on. Fuck like, that. That made me upset. That, that's like yeah. Final Destination 2. He got taken out by a brick. Yeah. It's like, give me a fucking break, yeah. man. Uh, but however, Beetle Baby, which trademark, that's what I'm calling him. Beetle, Beetle Baby. Beetle Baby. Either that or Baby Juice. I think Beetle Baby sounds better. Yeah. Um, Beetle Baby is awesome. He's... You get a couple scenes with a Beetlejuice Baby. Uh, again, I thought it looked great. I want great. a Beetlejuice Baby. I want a Beetlejuice Baby too. Like, Not I think a real one. I want a real one. <laughs> that thing was cute as shit. I love Beetlejuice Baby. Um, we get a direct reference from Casper as well, um, which, you know, you know how I feel about Casper. Astrid and her boyfriend start kissing and dancing, and then the next thing you know, they are They're levitating in the air. And she's like, what the hell? Yeah. yeah, so cool. So Astrid's boyfriend, the boy she meets, turns out to be a ghost that killed his parents, and when the police chased him up in a treehouse, he fell and broke his neck. So she's seeing him, and he's trying to trick her to go into the afterlife with him. Yeah, well, he tells her to say this, like, incantation, mm -hmm. and she says it, and she... They both go into the the um, the neither world. the neither world, and now he can come back as alive, and she has to stay there. She's dead, yeah. but she doesn't even go to the neither world. She goes to the great beyond. Right. She gets on the train, and she's done. Like that's a wrap for done her. For her. Um, so Lydia, she uses Beetlejuice to help find Astrid. So she, you know he comes in handy, but what she has to she has to marry him. Yeah. In order to so she signs a contract to marry him. Right. I'm gonna make you so happy. <laughs> Um, but, I mean, I guess you'd do anything for your child. Right. Uh, Delia does die. She gets snakes that are depoisoned that aren't actually depoisoned. They're not depoisoned. She and, paid extra. Yeah. And, and they bit her. Yeah. And she dies. And then Bob, we all love shrunken head Bob. He dies as well and his little eyeballs pop. Because Bob. Uh, Dolores, the soul sucker, sucks his soul right out. Oh, bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then we find out, um, we didn't really talk about it, but Astrid's dad had died. Um, but Lydia can never see him. You know, she sees ghosts, but he's never been able, she's not, never been able to see him. So they Which do... is another reason Astrid and her are so strained. Yes. At one part, Astrid even says, and we should have said this earlier, Astrid, for those of you that don't know, is Jenna Ortega's character. Yes. She even tells Lydia at one point, like, isn't it ironic that you can see all these ghosts, but the one ghost that I want you to see that means the most to me, you can't? Yeah, so that's that's a big strain on them. But they do see, um, they finally see him in, in he, the neither world. In the neither world, and he um, ends up sa saving them. Mm -hmm, pretty but much. What, one of the things with him is you're debating throughout the movie if he's alive or dead. Yeah, well, because you I mean, never if get conclusive. He, if he never came back, you know, like why wouldn't you come to see right. your child? But they never found a body, so we're thinking like, oh, Maybe he's gonna he's be alive. alive. Yeah. But the big twist was that the one boy was dead, and I called it anyway because yeah. they went in his bedroom in the handbook for the recently deceased. Was there. I was like, what? He How got it he just, from a yard sale? sale. Yeah, get the fuck out of yeah. here, kid. What the? F and then we talk about Lydia's boyfriend. Um, he's there throughout the whole movie. He's kind of like her producer on her TV show. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and he's like one of those new wave hippie guys. Like he tries to relate to Astrid and she's like, bro, fuck yeah, off. Like, I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. It's not working. Yeah, just um, go away. I don't yeah. like you. Nobody wants her to marry him. Even Delia. She's like, <laughs> but, you know, he proposes to her at her father's wake, which is super fucking what disrespectful, the hell? Yeah, by the way. Yeah, but it's more for views. Like, that's all he cares about. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, come to find out, Beetlejuice injects him with a true serum. He tells her, I don't love you. I was only in this for the money. They met at a support group yeah. for grieving people after um, Lydia's husband had died, Astrid's dad. And he tells her, like, I never lost anybody. I was just there to meet a vulnerable woman. I hit the jackpot with you. Uh, so he's just really a disgusting fucking guy anyway. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he ends up getting eaten by the sandworm with uh, Dolores. They get eaten by the sandworm. Beetlejuice actually helps at one point. He does become useful. And the movie ends with Lydia and Astrid going to Dracula's castle. They got to do all the things that she wanted to do with her dad. That was the stuff that she had planned to do with her yeah. dad. She meets a boy. She gets pregnant. She's on the delivery well, she table. She gets married first. Yep, married then, first. Then they have a baby. Beetle baby. A beetle baby. This was the second uh, viewing of Beetle Baby. This is when Lydia wakes up and that was a dream. And then Beetlejuice is right next to her. And then she wakes up from that dream and the movie ends. Yeah. So Beetlejuice, the way he gets dispatched in this movie, he broke the contract. Yep. They had a contract to where if he got her Astrid back from the afterlife, she Lydia would have to meet anymore, him. Yep. And he, she would have to marry him. Yep. So. And then... When that happens, he ended up breaching the contract. Astrid found the the, the footnotes the in the handbook for the recently deceased. There's a lot of fucking loopholes in there this movie. Is. And that's how Beetlejuice gets dispatched. Um, so overall, I'm going to give this movie a three out of five. What I will say, I had so much fun watching yeah. this movie. So from an uh, entertainment point of view, absolutely love it as a critiquing point of view there's a lot of things i think could have been done better mm -hmm. like i said get rid of all the loophole stuff things like that could have been done way differently so overall i'm going to give this a three out of five i'm going to give it a three and a half out of five um i love the the nostalgia of it mm -hmm. um and i've been waiting for it for a long time and it didn't disappoint me at all like i i you know i was entertained like you said um, yeah, there was a, a bunch of stuff going on that probably could have been cut out. Um, could have been cut out, not probably could have been cut yeah. out, and it still would have been good. Um, but it yeah, didn't ruin the movie, It though. didn't ruin the movie at all. And, yeah, like I said, I had so much fun with it. Go watch this movie. Absolutely. Uh, especially if you're a fan of the first one. Go into this knowing you're not going to get the first one. Yeah. Um, I will, however, say I think Keaton's performance in this is on par oh, with what he absolutely. did in the original. Mm -hmm. The performance in this were great. The, the biggest problem Ash and I both had was the the images of Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. Just get him the fuck out of there. Don't need him. Goodbye. If you don't know enough about it, do look some it research. Up. Look it up. We're not going to give any more of our platform to him. But that that we didn't like. Uh, but overall, great movie. We mm -hmm. had a great time. Let us know in the comments. What did you think of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Would you like to see a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Um, is that something you guys <laughs> would like to see eventually in the future? Um, if you haven't already... Please like, comment, and subscribe. It does help build the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay where you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.